Hey there, everyone. This is Mike from Nintendo Fuse. I'm joined by Joseph. Hi. And uh, Brandon. Hello. All right. Uh, here we're going to talk about what's really coming up. It's that uh, E3. Uh, all the games that we have coming or that is coming to Switch. Uh, not so much 3DS. Uh, I don't think there's anything coming for 3DS, unfortunately. Um, we're going to talk a little bit more about our, our predictions. Um, a bunch of games here, <laughs> thankfully. We've got a lot to talk about right now, so let's uh, let's get into it. The first game we have uh, we're going to talk about today is uh, Smash Brothers, but we're mm-hmm. mostly going to talk about the DLC. So what, what do you guys think is the next DLC character for uh, Smash? It's Andrew probably- Oh. Yeah, I mean, that's the most likely at the moment. I've been pulling for Master Chief, but either way, probably going to be a Microsoft rep. I think that's, uh, I think with the most recent rumors coming out as of late, it seems that Microsoft and uh, Microsoft and Nintendo are playing extremely nice with each other, that it would uh, be quite surprising if there wasn't some kind of Microsoft representative or some kind of partnership uh, with Smash Brothers. Mm-hmm. Given the evidence over the last few months, or even release with those uh, rare trophies that were found in the game before release and then taken out, and some of the more recent rumors. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm probably gonna go at a bit out of left field here, but I'm mm-hmm. gonna say uh, I'm gonna say Bob Ross. No, um, <laughs> right. It's not it's definitely not gonna be Bob Ross. I feel like a rabbit might actually uh, make their playable uh, entrance into uh, Smash Brothers at some point, mm. especially since we got Mario and uh, mm. or, yeah, Mario Rabbit's Kingdom yeah. Battle. So hmm. I was pulling for Rabbit Peach before the game came out, so Rabbit Peach would be a great addition. Oh, yeah, that, that, that'd be an interesting, that, that, for me, that would be an interesting thing, because they can easily mm-hmm. have like a Mario Rabbit or a Yoshi Rabbit or a Peach Rabbit. Hmm. So you think they would go with a Ravid instead of uh, someone like Rayman? Or at least, do you think Rayman would show up in any capacity? Um, I feel like he's already there. I don't quite remember. I haven't quite unlocked everything quite yet. So I think he's okay. a spirit. That's about it. Uh, I guess he could yeah. use this trophy. Mm-hmm. I think I, there. I think there's some rumblings that he's showing up in a reflection somewhere. Yeah, in the, but... <laughs> that's more of a joke than anything, I think. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But, uh, I think that really it's it regarding Smash, unless that they add any extra deal or features to the game. I don't think they can really add anything else. The game's pretty much Break in its target. ultimate form. So break the targets. Oh, I haven't had that in a while. That that'd be a fun like individual break to targets again. Yeah, <laughs> that sounds a little uh, time consuming for all seventy plus characters. That's true. I mean, it's worth it. <laughs> <laughs> that would. I mean, I would pay a decent amount of money for 70-plus break-the-target stages. I, I would on board the platforms as well. True, yeah. that would also be pretty fun. Yeah, they're never going to bring back Smash Run, though, so... I uh, Yeah, or what was the other one on Wii U? Was that Smash Board? Smash Tour. To- Smash yeah. Tour, yes. No, oh, man, let, let that stay dead. That, that, yeah. that one can stay dead. <laughs> I agree, that one definitely deserves to stay dead. Oh, yeah. Uh... Really, uh, let's talk about another thing that's a little more recent, uh, the Pokemon Direct. So what do you guys think of um, initial release, like the initial uh, showings, I should say, of uh, Pokemon Sword and Shield? I'm pretty happy with it. I, I liked pretty much everything they've shown, actually. I don't think I haven't liked anything they've shown. Yeah. Um, I, I agree with that sentiment. I'm actually fairly excited for this one, unlike uh, Sun and Moon. Sun and Moon at first excited me, but I kind of lost a bit of interest in it. This one has uh, my uh, interest very high, um, especially with the new raid battles. Um, that looks like something... Um, I never got to experience the raid battles they have in Pokemon Go, but I've heard nothing but you know semi-fun things, especially if you're doing it with friends, and this seems like a fun cooperative experience with friends you can even do online which is uh which i was very surprised oh yeah. see. so that's my most anticipated feature definitely in, the, uh, in this upcoming game that in the movable camera that's finally we're not i can actually move the camera <laughs> i hope that that the most one of the most exciting features is something that's been in 3d games since mario 64 
pretty much. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So hey, that's definitely it's some of the things. I am more of a collector, if anything. So mm -hmm. I like finding Pokemon. I like finding things that are interesting to me. So I'm hoping there's gonna be a lot of uh interesting new Pokemon, at least for the eighth generation. Uh mm -hmm. probably see a few of maybe three. I'm kind of hoping that we see a few more. Uh, I imagine they'll do what they've usually done in the past, is revealed more Pokemon towards uh, the release date. Mm -hmm. And then maybe save 20 or so for like, oh yeah, here's the rest in a Brady Games guide or something. Mm. Yeah. Um, if my brain would work. Uh, I think this one's looking like it's going to be a bit harder than the most recent games. Like the raid battles seem like they take a bit more skill... The, so the fact that the gym leaders can actually, you know, Dynamax seems like they're going to be at least increasing the difficulty a bit. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's going to be like crazy hard, but I think it'll be more challenging than the most recent entries. Oh, yeah, yeah I, I agree with that. Which version are you two personally leaning towards at the current moment in time? Uh, I think I'm leaning towards, uh, what was it? I don't know which version I got. I, it was either sword or shield. I have to. Well, those are the two options. Yes. I know, and that was as the unfortunate thing because I forgot which one I pre-ordered, and I have to actually go and ch pay more money towards that pre-order at some point. Mm -hmm. but, uh, I uh, I'm pretty sure I'm going to go with sword just because the idea of a wolf legendary with a sword sticking out of its mouth is kind of amusing to me. Yeah, I might have actually pre-ordered sword, so we'll mm -hmm. see what happens. <laughs> Yeah, I think I'm probably leaning towards Shield. It will ultimately determine once we get closer to release and we see what uh, Pokemon are version exclusive. But mm -hmm. uh, I'm really looking forward to uh, seeing how this uh, this new region and experience is going to take. I mean, I always end up buying both anyway, so. <laughs> oh, yeah. So uh, what about these uh, new Pokemon that we all seen? So uh, there was that Wooloo and then uh, I think Corviknight and then the... Uh, Oh, God. Glossum or Glossomer mm -hmm. or whatever it's called. Something gnaw. Um Yeah. I think what's interesting is we haven't had a Raven Pokemon mm -hmm. yet. Yeah, um, I saw someone highlight that online. And when I thought about it, oh, yeah, we've only had a Crow Pokemon, which is interesting. So, um, and again, another comment I've seen that I sort of agreed with is that. Uh, he doesn't look very trustworthy as far as being the thing that tra takes you around. So yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I agree with that sentiment that I've seen online. Well, was it dark steel or something, or was it flying dark steel or flying dark? <sighs> something like that. But just its overall appearance, just that doesn't look like a very friendly Pokemon that you want to be taking you up into the sky. Oh yeah, <laughs> certainly no Pidgey. Yeah, I don't know. It looks cool though. I might. I, I'm thinking of using mm -hmm. it. I can't wait. Oh, then the uh, there's that turtle. Yeah, that that's what I was thinking of. That had some like gnaw. I can't remember the first part of the name though. Is it Nawsome or no? No, nah, something or other. Um, let's look at this Pokemon reveal. Was it reveal. Dreadnought? Was it Dreadnought? It might be. Uh, I didn't. Gosh. <laughs> or you can maybe be able to find it on Cerebi. Or Cerebi. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll kind of uh, kind of glaze over that for now. But top of that, all sorts of things we got from the uh, Pokemon Direct itself. So we got uh, the raid battles. We got all, like, the Dynamaxing. We got Legendaries. Mm -hmm. Then we got the Pokemon availability, depending on the time of day and the weather. Mm. It which was I think... So yeah, I'm thinking uh, I, that's probably my favorite mechanic because if it's like really cold at night and it's rainy or something like that, you're going to get a lot of uh, Meltans or something. Hmm. Oh man, if we can actually read Battle Meltan, that'd be great. Yeah. Sounds, uh, sounds pretty interesting. I'm kind of hoping that uh, he's available in that game and not like a Pokemon Go exclusive still. <laughs> Well, yeah, we can trade him through the probably trade him through the uh, the thing they announced the Pokemon uh, Home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I think the the raid battles are also probably how they're going to uh, distribute event Pokemon as well. Mm -hmm. Which, I think that'll be pretty interesting to see how it goes. Um, 
don't think there's much else really with the Pokemon Directs here. I predict uh, the Dolphin Pokemon. <laughs> any uh, any other predictions for Pokemon? <laughs> They'll probably do a um, do a presentation after or play it at, during the Treehouse Live and probably show a few new Pokemon. Um, I know there's, I think, a squirrel Pokemon we haven't uh, heard about yet that was shown on a T-shirt, so we'll probably see that revealed, potentially. Yeah. I'm seeing possibly a return of uh, Mega types, if anything. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe given a few, maybe given a few more Pokemon Mega evolutions, and please, <laughs> yeah. in like in addition to having all this Dynamax, I could see them adding extra things. So I'm kind of hoping a Lolan Pokemon or also in the game, so like, mm -hmm. it's like convert them over to uh, some other type because I do enjoy the Alolan uh, Vulpix. Yeah, I really hope some of the Pokemon will have you know different uh, regional forms as well. That sounds like it's one feature I very much enjoyed from uh, Sun and Moon. So hopefully that will make a return, and there will be more variety too because there was only maybe like what eight or so from the oh. class. Something like that, yeah. Yeah, Something so like it'd be that. nice if there was if there was a bit more variety and like, by about like maybe twenty, combined with the Alolan, so about ten new ones. Hopefully, it's more than uh, Doug Trio with uh, golden hair. <laughs> I mean, that golden hair is pretty pretty tight. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's a reason it was a meme. Yeah, <laughs> true. Uh all right, uh, let's move on from that because we can probably go on quite a while on uh, Pokemon itself. But um, let's go to Cadence of Hyrule. Um, it's from Brace Yourself Games, so it's published by Nintendo. It's uh, basically Crypt of the Necrodancer and Legend of Zelda combined into one game. Uh, it's basically the sequel to Crypt of the Necrodancer. So. Uh, I'm pretty excited for it, uh, mm -hmm. having probably over 400 plus hours at this point on the Neko Dancer between the PlayStation 4, the Switch, and the PC. So, like, I, I have enough time on these games. I'm pretty excited. I love rhythm games mm -hmm. through and through. So. Are you are you expecting this game to possibly be your game of the year? Just from the it's game? already a game of the year. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, I'm really excited for Cadence of Hyrule. Um, I've been playing uh, the first game, Crypt of the Necrodancer, on my Vita a lot recently, and it's been a very enjoyable experience. I'm not normally a rogue uh, light player, but it's been uh, very enjoyable. Are you expecting there to be a... Do you think a lot of people are expecting more of just a rhythm-based Zelda game, and they'll be surprised that it it'll be like a roguelike game? Uh, I'm expecting there to be a lot more uh, variety in that sense. So I'm expecting it to be somewhat the same sim same formula as a uh, Necrodancer. So like having your multiple characters, your characters mm -hmm. doing different things. Uh, like I don't expect them to like drag in like Marin or something like that and say, "Oh yeah, Marin's your like your Bolt clone or something like that." Mm -hmm. But uh, do you think they'll like change the gameplay style a bit with this release since roguelike uh -huh. aren't exactly everybody's cup of tea and that might turn some people off since they might think it's just, you know, a standard Zelda game, if you know what I mean? Yeah, uh, I have seen some random bits here and there, so it is somewhat unroguelike. Uh, mm -hmm. It has, from what I've read, it has saves or save points. Hmm. Uh, so it is going to be like full-fledged dungeons. Um, Interesting. Hmm. What else did I read about it? There was uh, a couple other odd, odd little things. So like, I don't know at this point. Uh, lost track of my mind here. <laughs> All right. Uh, I think Cadence of Hyrule. I didn't actually. I didn't actually consider the possibility of there being more than the three characters they've shown off. That's interesting. Yeah, um, in the first game, you unlock characters over time as you find them. No, you I, I knew, base between each session. 
Yeah, I, I knew that. I just didn't think like, oh, they'd bring that over into Zelda. Would they include any mm. of these other characters, you think? Uh, I I imagine so. There's quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like they probably have a chance to include someone like Tingle. Um, that, that I would love. <laughs> like, you need the power of Kula, Timpa, or whatever, Limpa, yeah. for... Uh, <laughs> Necro for for that Necro Dancer universe is uh, gonna be gonna be needed. <laughs> uh, Plays the got? King of Red Lions. <laughs> King of Red yeah. Lions is probably another one. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't say. Oh, Beetle's probably gonna be a shop owner. No, they've already shown the shopkeep. It's uh, the guy. No, well, they could have like two different shopkeeps. Like oh. one right there. there's the yeah, traditional they're, they're, one and more. Yeah, and have Beetle. Okay. Um, I know I, the candy shops are always the best shops. <laughs> do you think? Uh, do you think they would allow you to play as like past villains? Maybe not Ganondorf, but maybe have like other um, villains from other games, like maybe Vadi from like uh, Minish Cap and Four Swords, like in his more human form from Minish Cap. Uh, I have a feeling they might. Um, I could see it being more like their bosses, yeah. like randomized bosses. How it is traditionally. Um, um, I can see it be more like more of the characters and all that akin to like Hyrule Warriors, like all the characters you got in that game. Mm -hmm. So you got your Zelda, you got your Link, you got your uh, the butterfly lady person, Agatha. Agatha. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, well, it's... So that was actually something I was going to bring up because do we know that the villain is Ganon? Because if not, Ganondorf could be playable. It could be a. Uh, Pig Ganon. I imagine if they're going back to like some basics with it, they could just easily go and say, "Oh yeah, Pig Ganon." This is oh. the one that's like more a little bit more animated as opposed to the uh, traditional Ganon. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, I can see that happening. Yeah. Um. How much else? There's the game. The game is pretty much like straightforward. It's a roguelike, it's mm -hmm. a rhythm roguelike, I should say. Mm -hmm. Um. Randomly generated dungeons. I am not sure if this game's going to be randomly generated. I haven't um, seen too much on that. Um, I hope. Kind of, I'm kind of hoping. Well, we'll probably find out. Or, so or kind of, guys, oh, go ahead. Yeah, I'm kind of hoping that they speak a little bit more on the direct and maybe uh, kind of shadow drop it to us. Mm -hmm. That's what I was going to ask. Is do you guys think it's going to shadow drop? And if so, how much do you think it'll shadow drop for? Uh, well, I'm going to run on a whole different uh, currency here because I guarantee it's going to be $20 Canadian. So mm -hmm. it's probably going to be 15 18 American or something mm -hmm. like that. Okay. Yeah, I, I'd probably say, like, yeah, seventeen ninety nine is probably about what we're going to get. Yeah, if the original went for about 15 it could it could potentially... Uh go for around 15 as well. I think um, I think with it being the Zelda intellectual property crossover that it might have a bit of like an upcharge with it being like a premium brand of Zelda. So maybe mm. it, if anything, just $5 US, uh, US uh, more expensive, but if not, you know, the cheaper, the better. Oh, yeah. All right. So uh, that is it for that we're gonna move on to the uh spooky game of the hour here uh luigi's mansion 3. Hmm. not much is known about this game other than the fact that it exists uh mm -hmm. the sequels were on consoles that aren't the switch um we're not getting hd ports of the switch version to or at least to the switch at least not yet mm -hmm. um so what do you guys uh what do you guys think? What do you guys expect of uh Luigi's Mansion 3? Uh it looks like it's gonna be in a hotel of some kind because it's a multi-story building. But mm. the um, the design of the hotel is very reminiscent of the uh scare scraper in the multiplayer mode of Luigi's Mansion 2. Um it doesn't look one to one, but with you know how tall it is. Um so I'm I'm expecting there to be multiple floors, each with uh, their own unique theme, potentially. Mm -hmm. I'm my only hope is that it's more exploration based, like the original. 
unlike uh, Dark Moon, in that there will hopefully be portrait ghost boss fights, since those were the most interesting instead of the more generic uh, looking colored ghost from uh, Dark Moon. But based on the little few seconds of footage that we have, that doesn't seem to be the case, but I hope I, I'm wrong. Yeah, I'm kind of hoping on uh, it being kind of back to the original. Um, mm -hmm. I wouldn't mind going back through to collect booze, having that be a mechanic. Mm -hmm. um, um, I can see it being kind of Metroidvania-ish, that where like you unlock different characters from, like you rescue them from the paintings, and that allows you to, or their abilities allow you to go further into the mansion. I can see that happening. Yeah, that could be interesting. So you're thinking that there will be multiple people to rescue this time around. I think we've seen them in paintings. You've seen Mario, Peach. I think even Bowser was in one of the paintings. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hmm. I, I don't remember though. I'd have to. I don't. Don't quote me on that. Yeah, that's, that sounds pretty interesting. That actually would be at least different enough if there was like different abilities per character which that you unlock. Mm -hmm. Do you think it would be a linear experience like the first game, or do you think they would go for more open-ended design of you being able to explore a majority of the mansion, but like go at your own pace? Uh, it's probably going to be a uh, open exploration. So I find mm -hmm. Nintendo has been uh, experimenting more with that as well. So Breath of the Wild being the biggest example of that. Uh, Pokemon being the next big example of that. Mm -hmm. Super Mario Odyssey is kind of it's years in coming. So I think they were well more than planning that. But mm -hmm. um, I think it's probably going to be more an open-ended experience. So like you've say beat something on the first floor or not first floor third floor you get the key to the basement you unlock the basement to beat a boss down there to go up to the fifth floor or something like that yeah i can see that hey man if your logic's true i can't wait for uh open world metroid prime 4 <laughs> yeah uh, yeah interesting if that would happen um, I do hope that they bring back a multiplayer mode uh, just as its own separate thing of the scare scraper. That was, uh, it was a pretty fun diversion when you wanted to do something with friends. Um, but it would be nice if they kind of expanded on it just a little bit more. But a cooperative Luigi's Mansion element would be pretty fun, especially with uh, Gooigi in the 3DS remake. Um, I do wonder if that means they will be experimenting with a two player cooperative mode, either locally or online. What if, uh, what if uh, rescuing the characters allows you to use them in co-op? I would That would actually be fine with me. That actually sounds pretty interesting. Oh, yeah. It, it, it sounds pretty... Uh, I have seen games do it before, too, which is mm -hmm. always fun. Um, there's not much else. We don't really have too much of anything. I'm kind of hoping that a Nintendo reels a bit more about that game. Um, mm -hmm. There's a lot of games I need to talk about, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah. Where do you see this game stacking up on the, in the lineup? Is it going to be more of an August, September, October? Or? It's, it's definitely going to be an October game. I was okay. going to say, like, you know, if they're not releasing in October, what are they doing? Well, they, they did release Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon in, like, March or April. Yeah, but April Fools is not Halloween. <laughs> True. All right. <laughs> sure whatever yeah i mean as long as we don't get mission structure like dark moon i'll be happy mm -hmm. yeah, maybe uh, side missions side missions are fine i, I just want to i just don't want to be randomly dragged out of right after a mission or objective i'm randomly dragged out to a main menu to select a new level i just want to explore the my surroundings oh yeah all right so uh guess with that luigi's mansion out of the way since all right it's pretty much over and done with at the moment. Uh, Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3. All right. So <laughs> Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 is coming out a week before Fire Emblem, I think around the 16th or 19th of July, uh, exclusively on Switch by Team Ninja and published by Nintendo, which is a very big surprise. Um, the previous uh, Marvel Ultimate Alliance games were published by Activision on everything. <laughs> everything, especially the first game, is on GBA, DS, PSP, just How everything. Did you have a GBA? Yeah, there was a GBA one. It was weird. Um, <laughs> so, 
So yeah, Marvel Ultimate Alliance, it's great to see it return. Um, if you haven't played it, it's a uh, isometric top-down um, Diablo-style action RPG where you play as one of four different characters and you try to complete missions uh, and um, go around beating up bad guys as your favorite Marvel heroes. Normally they have an assortment of Marvel heroes uh, that are even more obscure um, than your average you know, Spider-Man or Spider-Gwen. Um, mm -hmm. So like this time around we have Kamala Khan or Miss Marvel, which is one of the more recent uh, Marvel superheroes in comics, and she's really great. So it's good to see an addition. Um, they've said that this is going to be more of a combination of the MCU movies combined with the comics. So if you're familiar with one or the other, you'll be able to quickly jump in and uh, find these. So, um, so yeah, that's basically the basics of what Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 is. Mm -hmm. uh, so, all right. uh, Joseph, is there anything uh, you want to add into it? Because I've really never played uh, any of the most Marvel Ultimate Alliance games, so pretty much yeah. in the dark here. <laughs> I mean, uh, let's see. The story is kind of loosely related to the um, the Avengers: Infinity War and uh, End Game. They've said that's or at least mm -hmm. it's similar the infinity stones so i feel like it, the infinity stones might have an effect similar to uh what they do in oh god what's the game uh marvel versus capcom infinite yeah oh. where it kind of like strains your characters and such in different attributes mm -hmm. yeah um other than that i mean i could see a i could see a crossover nintendo character happening like maybe samus is in there for some reason yeah <laughs> There was, back in the day, there was a uh, potential uh, two characters of Samus and Link uh, showing up in uh, Marvel Ultimate Alliance, but because of some, sadly, uh, some showing those characters on a Sony, on the Sony version during testing, uh, Nintendo didn't like that and uh, made sure they didn't uh, release those, sadly. Um, but I think this game should be on a lot of people's radar, hopefully, um, mainly because it has a uh, full four-player and online co-op which is nice, and I'm sure they'll be adding new additional characters, whether Nintendo or Marvel characters over time as uh, DLC. So there will there will always be something like come back to hopefully um, over the next few months, and I'm sure we'll see the different character reveals just like we do Smash Brothers, but obviously not as crazy as Joker and Smash. Uh, do you think? Um, do you think um, what's it called that it's going to use the uh, Nintendo Switch Online app? Uh, potentially for voice chat, but uh, I know I won't personally be using it. I'll just be using Discord or some other chatting service. But I would imagine that since it's a cooperative RPG, that having voice chat and you know voice um, having the ability to communicate with your team is important, especially on higher difficulties. Well, I mean, Fortnite does it directly through the console, so I wouldn't be surprised if Ultimate Alliance did the same thing. True, but this is not this is a first-party Nintendo-based game this time around, so mm -hmm. so you never know. Oh, yeah. Although, speaking of communication, uh, did you guys know that we have a Discord server? I didn't <laughs> until today. <laughs> well, for any of our uh, viewers watching this far, uh, we do have a Discord server. Uh, the link will be in the description below if you guys want to... Uh, join in. Uh, there's almost all of us in the Discord itself. Um, there's a fair bit of uh, people that probably could join. Uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, it's a good place to talk about uh, games, talk to us, ask us what we want, or ask us questions about what we want to see, or even ask us like to cover certain topics, like uh, I don't know. Uh, just pull one out of uh, out of my hat here. Uh... Yeah, will Banjo be in Smash? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Will Banjo be in Smash? Uh, what else do we have here? We got uh, Doug Bowser holding up swag for E3. So this is like it's all sorts of things we could be talking about, and this is a great way for you guys to actually come in and talk to us directly and say like we want this we want more gameplay we want more chats we want more industry talks which we don't have a lot of currently uh 
We want more podcasts. We want more of this. So get on there, join up, and it is absolutely the best way to get a hold of us, especially when we uh, are at our busiest. All right. So and back into the whole thing of communication. Uh, Animal Crossing. Oh, man. Are we oh, hoping boy. that Tom Nook communicates his way through Discord and tells us to pay back our loans? Hopefully. <laughs> um, I hope I go into debt. Wow. <laughs> the state of economy these days. I hope I go into debt by a giant raccoon. Yeah. Is he giant or are we just small? Well, Tanukis normally are pretty giant. Oh, okay. Um, oh, yeah. So what are, we, what, what, what are you guys expecting to see in uh, the new Animal Crossing game that is coming to Switch uh, at some point in its life? Hmm. Uh, that's a good question. I've only played one Animal Crossing game, so I, I can't really speak too much about it. Uh, I do know it used to have the ROMs of old Nintendo games, but I don't think that's coming back. Uh, I can see them adding that back in if they do something like Super Smash Bros. Brawl, where they have like small demos, and then it links you to, I don't know, the Nintendo Online NES uh, app, where it's like, hey, if you want to join Nintendo Online, then you can have access to this game. I know that's basically oh, yes. an advertisement, but... Technically, so were the brawl demos. Oof. Uh, sounds uh, sounds pretty uh, pretty exciting. Uh, I've never played An An Animal Crossing. Uh, I can never get into it. Um, I mail. I I like collecting things. Uh, I fell in love with Stardew Valley, but uh, being in debt it reminds me too much of real life and. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Making my room look nice uh, also reminds me too much of real life. So, yeah, uh, kinda, I kind of take a hard pass on it. <laughs> I think the biggest draws uh, for me when it comes to Animal Crossing is the sense of community. Um, when I used to play uh, Wild World and City Folk, the ability to go on to a website like AnimalCrossingCommunity.com and uh, see that there's actually an entire online economy yeah. <laughs> or for animal crossing is very interesting like you'll you know you can sell a bunch of rare items you can coordinate with uh, with players around the world and even go to like special um, worldwide events that are happening and celebrating holidays in japan or other places and find unique items that aren't even in the american version that you can normally access so those are always fun times and i can only imagine that they will hopefully keyword hopefully improve that aspect with um, with this version since we now have to pay for online and that there's e um, an easier way to connect with friends and maybe even have like a central hub to where I can have all of my Switch friends who have the game communicate or interact with one another instead of just having four players come in when I have a gate open or, or my or train tracks are open or a line to come to my town. Uh, I can see uh, I can see them using the online app once again. I'm bringing the online app up again, but um, I can see them using that for quick access to the stores and also mm -hmm. like a Miiverse like message board kind of thing. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Or like, trying to plan when you're going to meet up with friends. Yeah, mm -hmm. sort mm -hmm. of, kind of like uh, how Splatoon Two uh, actually deals with the app. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, but like better. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. I mean, it's yeah. the experiment. Ideally, ideally, in a perfect world, it'll be better than that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I just hope that there are more interactive elements uh, with friends and online. I think that's probably, I think that's what a lot of people are expecting most is they need to do something unique with online this time around since we're now paying for an online service. Um, as far as just the regular game content, hopefully something that's even more um, interactive uh, than just being the mayor, being able to control more aspects of the town, uh, being able to tell uh, my neighbors when they can move out or don't build a house in front of my flower bed that I spent hours trying to crossbreed to get the perfect color. Um, you're, you're the leader of the, uh, what's it called, the Homeowners Association. 
Yeah, pretty much. That that would be nice, especially since you do that in uh, Happy Home Designer. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it definitely is something. So what do you guys expect uh, to see from the E3 Direct regarding Animal Crossing, though? Like, do you want to, like, just particularly like, new features, even a release date, I'm assuming? Uh, yeah. September. September? Yeah, I mean, they haven't shown a lot, but I, like... I, Luigi's Mansion, I cannot see that not being in, in October. And I feel like they're going to want something... Probably, I guess Animal Crossing is pretty big, so that might be in, like, December. But... Uh, didn't, uh, didn't New Leaf launch in December as well? Uh, New Leaf launched in June of 2013. Well, I was wrong. <laughs> yeah, I think it was or actually around this time six years ago. Yeah. I think it was June 5th or June 6th. Yeah, they are definitely going to... I'm sure they're going to show off a release date. I just don't... I think it'll still be this year. I don't think it'll be getting delayed. But... Yeah, I agree. I think it will It will be 2019. September probably sounds most likely since uh, July is very packed with releases. Um, it would be nice if it could come out sooner just because Animal Crossing is built around you know playing for like 20 minutes a day and then being able to experience holidays like Thanksgiving and... Uh, Halloween and such that I just don't see them releasing it during those months because you would want to prepare yourself for those activities yeah. and to get the most play time why would you release it during the busiest holiday th you know months of the year yeah so September makes sense because then you can prepare for Halloween and then Thanksgiving and uh, Christmas and New Year's and all that yeah. All right. oh yeah uh... I just hope I just hope they don't spend 20 minutes explaining things like they did with Smash Brothers last year <laughs> Although I love Smash Brothers, I think it was a little too much information for the people who don't like it, and so I hope they don't take a similar approach for Animal Crossing this year. I just like you know a few minutes, not twenty plus. All right. uh, well, we'll see I, what happens. Unfortunately, I, I do have one more thing. I'm sure, I think uh, the weather is going to be more dynamic than it was in New Leaf. Like in New, New Leaf, it was decent. It did change a lot, but I think it'll be a bit better and not quite as like like. It, It'll still be seasonal. Like you're not going to get snow outside of winter, but I think mm -hmm. it'll be a bit more uh, varied. Oh yeah, and that's probably something that I could see with a lot more uh, Nintendo games going forward as well. Mm -hmm. uh, especially like to having like different dynamic systems. So mm -hmm. Pokemon having it, Breath of the Wild having it, mm -hmm. uh, Mario to a degree having it. But um, yeah. Uh, but speaking of games that could possibly have it, uh, Astral Chain. Astral Chain looks great. I've barely seen anything of it, and I already want it. Mm -hmm. yeah, the Platinum Games uh, experience. Yeah, I don't think I've ever played a Platinum game before, so I'm, I'm, I'm excited for this. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, Astral Chain looks like a very fun action game uh, from Platinum. I've played several of their games, like Bayonetta and uh, Vanquish. And uh, this one reminds me, the gameplay style reminds me a little bit of uh, Transformers that they released a few years back, or at least just sort of the cel-shaded design. Um, but I've always enjoyed the combat, so this one has me quite intrigued. Um, and also the story reminds me a little bit of Psychopaths vibes, a little mm -hmm. bit. Um, so I'm with like this dystopian using villains to uh, capture criminals. So that sounds kind of an interesting dynamic. So that I'm very excited for. I'm actually surprised we already have a release date for it. Um, but it okay. does, the only thing that concerns me is length because some platinum games are very short, like Transformers, while others are a bit longer, like my, um, like Bayonetta 2. Okay. Yeah, I, I find with platinum though is that if it's a game based on a license or an IP, mm -hmm. it's gonna be it's gonna be short regardless. But it, they build it as more as a uh, love letter mm -hmm. to that uh, audience. So, tr say in the case of Transformers, that's a love letter to like '80s Transformers, like your oh, original better. robot, like your original Optimus, your original like Starscream. Yep. Uh, well, it's, uh, I forget about that, but it's like, but then you get to something like a uh, Bayonetta. I find the second Bayonetta is a little bit shorter, mm 
Mm -hmm. But the first bayonet is where they like put all their marbles in. It was like, oh yeah, this has to happen. Mm -hmm. And it has to have a sequel. And it did eventually get a sequel exclusively to the Wii U, which now technically is not exclusive anymore. But it works out in everyone's favor, more or less. Um, but I mean, it might as well be exclusive. I mean, it's still exclusive to Nintendo platform, at least. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But uh, I'm kind of hoping that uh, actual chain sees the same lights. Uh, we've been seeing a lot of games as well that do kind of kind of jump around to different platforms as well. Uh, Octopath Traveler actually, I think, released uh, either today or the other day on uh, Steam. So it is something that uh, has become a little more of a trend as well, especially when it comes to uh, these Nintendo games and games that Nintendo gets other developers to, let, to uh, make. Yeah, I, I I don't know. Did they are they publishing Astral Chain? Because that might make a difference. Um, I have not checked into that quite yet, but I'm kind of also hoping that during the direct, it's going they're going to show a lot more. Um, or even that, or like a trailer, like a bigger trailer, more or less on it. Maybe some fighting, some mechanics, um, maybe yeah. a bunch of other things. Looks like the publisher is indeed Nintendo, which makes sense since it's offered in the. Uh voucher program okay so yeah it's probably not gonna be uh what am i thinking it's it's probably not gonna be ported to another console then yeah probably not yeah so and for in getting into a lot of other things uh damon x machina so this is something i have a feeling may not sit on nintendo platforms for long i don't know if it's nintendo published i don't think it is uh i'll take a look but um it could be Nintendo published in North America, but uh... Uh, let's see. I'm looking for the publisher now. Uh, being published by it has a dual publisher of Marvelous. Oh, okay. Yeah. So if so, that so with that in line, Marvelous it potentially could go to other platforms, but it would if anything it would maybe go to PS4 if anything, but that's about it. Oh yeah. So I'm I'm I'm. I'm I'm. I've had. I had high hopes for this game. I. I don't want to base things based on that demo we had back in uh, was it February. I believe it was, but uh, I, I don't want to say it's going to be a bad game, but it isn't a game that necessarily uh, appeals to me. Um, I did get a feedback form for it as well. I forgot to fill it out, so my feedback is not exactly uh included <laughs> yeah i think i filled it out but uh I, I, there was like the it wasn't to my taste to the point like it was kind of from a base mm -hmm. level not you know something i would I, I would think i'd enjoy so i uh i don't think i'll be picking it up but uh yeah i have the demo downloaded still haven't played it <laughs> yeah. it's, it's it's an interesting demo it's not super great it's really buggy uh, for obvious reasons but um it looks like it's an interesting mech game but it doesn't look like it has that much depth it's no. too slow too and mm. that that's, that's probably my biggest complaint about that game as well i'm kind of hoping they sped it up mm -hmm. um they've had a while to work on it they've also said that they were working with all the uh feedback and trying to make the game a lot better for everyone so I'm hoping to see some uh, final form of it, at least this E3. Do you think it'll release this year, or do you think it will be a 2020 release? I think it'll release this year. It may not be like something crazy. It might like sit in a, like, a second slot for a month or something like that. So like this month we have uh, Mario Maker, but there's also the other like another big title coming to Switch is a uh, Crash Team Crash Team Racing. Yeah, it looks like it's been confirmed for summer 2019, according to a press release. But uh, like these are like there's games that are gonna be like at least double. I feel like it might be a September release. Hmm. Um, it could be an August release because usually the summer is pretty dry. Um, I don't know what's the interest been looking like for uh, Damon X Machina because if it hasn't been high, they might just send it out there to die. I haven't seen like anything for it, so. I mean, if if that if anyone at the end that's the case, it's going to be August for sure. Yeah. 
Um, but I at if people, I know people, uh, it's, it's pretty, it's been pretty mixed. It's like you get other reviewers and all that looking at it saying, oh yeah, it's this and that. It's kind of okay. It's kind of good. It has potential. Um, I think it has potential. I just need to see it in its full potential mm-hmm. before I make any good final opinion on it. Mm. Um, yeah, it is really uh, what we have for yeah. that. Look forward to. <laughs> yeah. But uh, what's more important is things that we haven't heard, hide, or hear about. That is Bayonetta 3. Metroid Prime 4. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to add another one in there. Pikmin 4. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's um, about that. A game that's been done for like five years. Yeah, yeah they said it was done in what, 2013? 2014? Yeah, I think. Mr. Miyamoto deciding that he's just going to shelve it until uh, a better time. I mean, it's the perfect time. It is the summertime. We can have Pikmin 4 right now. Shadow to, drop it. <laughs> shadow drop it during E3. Just sit there and say, buy it now, 20 bucks. I'd, I'd buy it. <laughs> uh, I don't think I've ever played Pikmin. I'm not a huge RTS fan. Oh, Pikmin, it is. Oh, I love it. I love my RTS games. I'm a big Command & Conquer fan, mm-hmm. but I'm also a big uh, try and get these things to pull giant fruit towards your ship. I enjoyed my time with Pikmin 3, so I I would... I'm not a huge Pikmin fan, but I would definitely buy Pikmin 4, as long as it's not a 2D platformer on 3DS, like the terrible Pikmin game. <laughs> yes, it's terrible. Yeah, I think I think we're probably going to get Pikmin 3 ported before we get Pikmin 4. Ah, yeah. yeah I, I'm kind of hoping that we get at least... I, I, actually, I'm kind of hoping we get all the Pikmin. Just... Bring them all in. Just bundle it all in there. Pikmin three, plus Pikmin four, plus uh, plus the first two in an HD collection or something. Just just bring it all over. Just collect. Make everything a collection at this point. True. Yeah. I don't know if Nintendo's want to do that, but uh, yeah. yeah. And we get uh, and then we got talk about uh, Metroid Prime Four, which. As far as I know, wasn't there rumors at one point that we're going to get a, the Metroid Prime collection? Yeah, yeah, I would love that. I don't know if it'll happen, but I'd love it. I could see them finally showing that off. Hopefully that is the case, but mm-hmm. you never know. Yeah, they might show another teaser for 4 just because they've switched development studios. They want people to know they're still working on it, you know? Mm. Or they'll just show another logo. Yeah, it's just another logo. Perfect. I wouldn't mind another logo as long as the logo is a little bit more animated this time. True. Star graphics, star wipes, everything. Yeah, Got to have those transitions. Yeah, maybe yeah. it's just the Samus render. Mm. Oh, no, and then maybe uh, those 90s dancey babies. What? Dancing uh, babies from the websites and all that. Oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, but, uh... Yeah, and then Bayonetta 3, which uh, we've heard of. We know it's being worked on. Uh, we, kind of, we know that the first two are on the Switch, so we don't have to, I don't have to ask sit there and say, hey, Nintendo, give me my Bayonetta 1 and 2. But I'm kind of hoping that we uh, get a release, a release date on it, uh, at least game, some gameplay, maybe a little plot, something that like, kind of wet the whistle a bit. I think we'll see something about it and it'll probably release next year. Like, so probably say something like spring 2020. Yeah, I agree. Um, I don't think they'll show it too much though. Cause I don't think they want to overshadow um, astral chain. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's probably, that's probably going to be one of those big things as well. I will, we can probably add a little bit more into that. That as well with Astral Chain, you could easily see something like a band at a cameo or cameo in it as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, yeah. It's one of those things. Uh, maybe vice versa. Maybe uh, the main character from Astral Chain coming over to Bayonetta three. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I don't know. Uh, the Astral Chain seems a bit more sci-fi than Bayonetta's kind of 
you know, fantasy thing going on. I don't know. You, you just gotta, you kind of gotta pick a character that kind of defines, like, kind of define or define or defines like Iraq that area. There. Or you could just have a costume cameo like they had uh, Bana dressing up as each. Or having Samus and Fox, I think. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, they could just do something like that. Mm. Oh, yeah. um, what was I thinking? Uh, uh, maybe this is dumb. What if it's a? Uh, what if they're? Well, that was one of the DLC options for Smash, like they're to cross promote, you know, an Astral Chain character. That'd be interesting. <laughs> it would be that one of the characters, you know, somewhat interesting. Yeah, I doubt they would do that, but it is an option. All sure. right. So, really, uh, that's it for a lot of our uh, big games that are actually coming to E3. But uh, I know there's a lot of predictions that we can potentially have. A lot of a lot of things on our own wish list that could be possibly a thing. But what do you guys want? from this E3 that has not been announced in any way, shape, or form, no rumors, no nothing, like, what do you guys think is going to come? What do you think is going to, like, shadow drop or just drop randomly and be like, oh, yeah, this game's coming type thing? I don't know about shadow drop, but I think they'll probably, at one of the conferences, announce that Battletoads is going to come to the Switch. Hmm. Because it makes sense, you know, Battletoads was originally on SNES, I believe, yeah. SNES. Uh, I believe it was on NES as well. Yeah. I believe it was on NES, and then I believe it made its trip over to the, to the uh, Super NES. All right. So, yeah, then I think Battletoads is a chance of being on the Switch as well as the Xbox One. But uh, I don't know about shadow dropping anything. Maybe Ori in the Blind Forest? That's not already on Switch. Is that already on Switch? No, it's not. But it's it's been rumored a little bit here and there. I'm sure Phil Spencer would. He likes Ori in the Blind Forest, to somewhat of an unhealthy degree. So I'm yeah, sure. Yeah. Put it on. <laughs> I mean, a Cuphead can come to a car, and I'm sure Ori in the Blind Forest can come to Switch in some capacity. <laughs> All right. Luckily, this isn't a Microsoft podcast. <laughs> Oh, well, that'd be a very short podcast at this point. I don't know. This year has seen. I, I got high hopes for this year for them. But anyway, <laughs> um, Brendan, you got anything? Uh, for predictions in general, uh, for one game that hasn't been rumored or anything that I would like to see is uh, The Great Ace Attorney being localized by Capcom and released. But um, that is like a dual duology uh, pack. But sadly, uh, that is probably not going to happen. So you'll probably have to rely on fan translations, which I've been playing the fan translation of the first game and it is very well uh, translated. So I just see it officially released in uh, as a North American release or European, just English in general. But um, sadly, I don't see that happening. But it would be great if it did. Stop crushing my dreams, Brandon. Yeah. Well. All right. Uh yeah, uh I got I, I got a fair bit of things wrote down actually. So one of the odd things I find too is uh Capcom likes to sneak things in. So with their big series currently, uh Monster Hunter, so they do have their Iceborne expansion coming out on the uh other consoles. Mm -hmm. But uh I have a feeling what we're gonna get is uh potentially a uh ground up version of monster hunter for the switch hmm. like not a not a 3ds ports mm -hmm. uh something great from them do you think it will be monster hunter 5 or do you think it'll just have its uh, own? monster hunter world is definitely monster hunter 5 it's okay. not gonna be monster hunter 6 i guarantee that one it's chances are it's going to be another spin-off series game it will likely feature a lot some of the new stuff from the new games as well um, and it'll probably be running on a better engine, hopefully. Uh, hopefully. It'll Monster. probably look a lot nicer. <laughs> Monster Hunter Triple X, I'm just uncensored. Oh, man. Hmm. It's already too far. <laughs> no one wants to see the Devil Joe. Yeah. Uh, Devil, definitely. Uh, what else do I got here? I got my impossible predictions as well. I got Pokemon Snap and Switch. 
Uh, um, Labo VR would actually be pretty interesting with that if that were to happen. Don't get uh, people, don't get people's hopes up. <laughs> <laughs> what else we got here? We got a uh, I got Pokemon Stadium. Just we're gonna do the whole thing with movies again and video other video games. Activision if Activision can release the same game with the same name twice over and within 10, 15 years. I'm pretty sure Nintendo can. They can do Pokemon Stadium on the Switch. Uh, what else do we have here? Um, I don't think anything else is unpredictable here. Uh, Professor Layton Collections 1 and 2. Capcom could really... Uh, no, Capcom. Level 5. Hmm. Could really uh, bring those out and make those shine. I think those would be perfect for the Switch. Yeah, oh. I, could, I could see them re-releasing at least Curious Village. Uh Mega Man X9. I think mm. Mega Man X9 is very possible. Has that not been re-released? No, no, no. I'm, I'm saying a new Mega Man X. Oh, a new Mega Man X. That could, um, be, yeah, could be something. That would be something worth uh, announcing during the Nintendo show or something like that. Yeah, it's going to be announced somewhere, I think. And if it is announced, it will be anime cutscenes. <laughs> like, what am I fighting for? What am I fighting <laughs> for? <laughs> Alright, so I have here. I got uh, I got the Zelda HD collection. So basically, the HD ports of uh, Twilight Princess and Wind Waker. I don't think we're ever gonna get a collection of Zelda games on like we did on the uh, GameCube, but mm -hmm. uh, it, it's very much a possibility. It's like kind of like open and shut from Nintendo. They could easily port these games over, get Tencent to uh, port them over to the Switch. Tencent. And then, that's it, Tencent, or is it? I don't know. Retention? I don't know. I think Grezzo has been porting them oh. over. Grezzo? Yeah. yeah oh, they wow. Did, they did uh, Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask at least on 3DS. Yeah. Well, they're one one of their porting studios. Grezzo is one of them. I know. Uh, I'm pretty sure Tencent's the other one as well. No, Tencent is the Chinese mega corporation. All right, something to start with the T. Uh, Nintendo. You know what? Uh, while you're doing that, uh, I do think I do still think there's still a chance that Persona Five could make its way to Switch. Hmm. Um, you know, it, it's it, it may not come soon, but I still think it's coming. Okay. Yeah, it would be nice to have it portably on the go, especially after Persona Three Portable and Persona Four Golden. Yeah. You think it would be Persona 5 Royal or Persona 5 Classic, you know, original? Honestly, I'd, as long as it's Persona 5 in general, I think people won't complain. They just mm -hmm. want to, but they'll yeah. they'll do it when you least expect it, and you'll never see it coming. All right. And finally, it was, uh, it was Tantalus. Tantalus. Is that the people who did uh, Twilight Princess? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Excessive um, amount of bloom everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. That's how it goes with uh, muddy-looking games like Twilight Princess. <laughs> uh, you guys think we'll get a new Castlevania? Mm. If it's not a pachinko machine, it's probably going to be a probably a two D game, something that's easy and cheap for Ka Konami to uh, up and make. You know, I'd say that, but they did a great job with Bomberman R. Yeah, if it's if it's in the style of Bomberman R, I would I I wouldn't mind seeing um, like more R versions of um, Castlevania or Metal Gear, like more focus on like Metal Gear One and Two. <laughs> I don't think they're gonna touch Metal Gear for a while. Yeah, I don't think they will. But Castlevania in that style, I think, could work uh, pretty well. Oh yeah. I guess uh, we'll have to see how Blood uh, is it Bloodstained. Blood yeah, Bloodstained does when it releases later in the month. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Which, uh, thankfully, I'll be, uh, at some point, if I get a hold of the, the publisher, I'll be reviewing that game as well. Mm. So I look forward to playing that through. So. Yeah. yeah. Um, as far as some of my predictions, I think that uh, we will be getting a few ports to Switch. Uh, in particular, I think Spyro, the entire trilogy, will be coming to Switch for the, maybe a September release. And there's also a lot of rumors with The Witcher 3 port, uh, and there seems to be a lot of voices in the gaming community talking about that. And sadly, 
Uh, I don't want that to be true, <laughs> but I see it. Uh, I see it definitely happening at this point. But I guess we'll see. I oh, mean, yeah. most of the people I've seen talk about it have been pretty excited about it. But yeah, I just feel like they wouldn't be able to experience it as well on the Switch. I feel like it would have a lot more technical limitations than even something like uh, Wolfenstein or Doom. So they'll probably have to decrease the resolution a lot more. And the game is just very pretty to see on uh, PC and uh, PS4 and Xbox One. I hope it can run well, but I just have a I have a feeling that it's probably not going to run as well as people expect it to be, and it won't be as great of a port as it could be. Well, you uh, did remind me that we're probably going to see something about Doom, Doom Eternal. True. Um, if anything, we'll probably see that at another conference, at Bethesda's conference, but hopefully we'll see some uh, Switch gameplay at Nintendo's uh, at Nintendo's Direct or uh, Treehouse afterwards, because I'm sure a lot of people will be wondering about that. Uh, I, mean, I, love that. I love the yeah. idea of the cognitive dissonance going from something like, you know, the Link to the Past remake, it's all for kids, to something going straight to just demon slaying, like bloody demon slaying in Doom. Like, take it back for the break. Actually, did we talk about uh, Link's Awakening? Oh, I don't, we actually don't think oh, we did. Yeah, no, we didn't talk about Link's Awakening. Um, yeah, so Link's Awakening is being really re-released on uh, Switch sometime in 2019. It will have more of a clay-like uh, art style to it. Uh, it's still going to be a uh, top-down isometric uh, Zelda game, similar to the Game Boy original. And I would assume that also means it will include um, the two additional color dungeons that were released in the DX version on G Game Boy. Mm. So do you guys think they're going to add any uh, maybe new dungeons or new things, or do you think it'll just be a straight-up one-to-one -one remake, nothing new? <sighs> it's hard yeah, to say. It might just be one-to-one. -one. It's Nintendo. I find them... They'll be more than willing to do like a one to one remake as opposed to uh, like a extra work type of remake. Yeah, I don't know if it'll be like a complete reimagining. At least I, they could like they didn't Wind Waker. They replaced one of the islands with another one. I could see something like that, but other than that, no, I don't see any like new stuff added on in addition to what's already there. Oh yeah, yep, yeah, I agree. So uh, hopefully that will be out sooner rather than later. Um, but I'm looking forward to maybe seeing how uh, or hearing the uh, redone soundtrack mm -hmm. as that, yeah. uh, that game has uh, some fantastic uh, musical scores. Oh, yeah. But that's pretty much all his all the games in the end. They all have really good music. Yeah. That's true. Um, as far as some other of my predictions... Um, I think we will get a Wii U port, uh, whether that be Wind Waker HD, um, our Metroid Prime Trilogy, though um, the one that I would personally love to see the most is Tokyo Mirage Sessions. It's a Persona-like game, and I think if people have been wanting a Persona on Switch, I think this would be an easy, easy cash uh, grab for Atlas to port over with Nintendo's help. And it is based on Fire Emblem, so we could, I guess included maybe a few months after the new Fire Emblem and then have people have a little bit more. It'll actually make money maybe for once instead of just randomly just putting it out there on Wii U. So maybe it'll actually be successful this time around. Yeah, I never played it and I heard it was great, so I hope it does get ported. Although, That's like, yeah, yeah I although agree. If anything mm -hmm. does get ported, I, I assume it's going to be like Mario 3D World, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or Pikmin 3 or something of that nature, yeah. Yeah. But I would personally love Tokyo Mirage Sessions, as that's like the only um, Wii U game I haven't played. Oh yeah, so I was actually tasked with uh, reviewing uh, Tokyo Mirage Sessions, so and we I didn't manage to get around to it because around the same time as I was also finishing up school and everything, so it was it is it is a fairly big game. I think I have like fifteen hours into it. I'm not even like early into the game, so mm -hmm. mm. yeah. Um... My, uh, my last two predictions are just characters for other games. Um, I think uh, there will be a character reveal of some kind in Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3. It'll probably be one or two characters, uh, something like fan favorites like Moon Knight or uh, maybe even other variations of characters. Hopefully, maybe a Nintendo-based character, but um, if anything, it'll probably just be some fan favorite uh, comic characters like Moon Knight or someone else. Mm -hmm. I could see maybe Rescue tie in with uh, 
that brief cameo she had in a uh, end game. Yeah, it could be that as well. So uh, aside from that, I think uh, there will be something Banjo Kazooie related, whether he's in Smash Brothers or something with Microsoft. Something Banjo Kazooie related will be announced at E3 this year. Mm -hmm. I've got gotcha. one, I've got one more, and that's uh, some kind of Halo port to uh, Switch. Not likely, but I can I can dream. I want to play <laughs> Halo on Switch. At least it's coming to Steam. Yeah, it is coming to Steam, but you know, want to play on Switch. Yeah, I understand. I guess that's everything from us. Uh, I like to thank uh, Brandon and uh, Joseph for coming out to uh, our pre-E3 game chat. Uh, remember that we do have a Discord. Check it out in the link in description. Um, be sure to look at our website, nintendofuse.com. See all sorts of reviews, news, and all sorts of things, including posts about our podcast, game chats, industry talks, and more. Hope you all have a wonderful day. Mm -hmm.